Hi, everyone. My name is Cynthia Grace. I am a candidate for the instructional design position. I was given a sample lesson to um, evaluate and edit. So I finished editing everything. And then I thought I should make this video to just show the original and then compare it to the edits that I made. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'm going to show you the original lesson and then um, the new lesson that I made. So the original lesson is right here. It, it was called um, sums using a number line. Um, so these boxes here, I'm just going to refer to them as boxes and then I'll show you the changes that I made. So the title sums using a number line in this lesson you will learn and then this sentence was never completed. Objectives, students will show how sums can be re represented as lengths on a number line. So that objective is just a little bit too vague. And um, objectives need really strong verbs. And this particular objective, as we make our way through the lesson, the lesson and the objective are not in alignment. There's, um, and then I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment, skills needed, key terms and materials. So here I just felt like there wasn't enough detail and I'll show you the changes I made to box one. Okay, so one of the first things I did was take a look at the common core standards for second grade. There were two common core math standards that were in alignment with what was happening in the lesson. So the standards say, if we take a look at B.5, use addition and subtraction within 100 to solve word, word problems involving lengths that are given in the same units, for example, by using drawings such as drawings of rulers and equations with a symbol for the unknown number to, re to represent the problem. The next standard, B.6, Represent whole numbers as lengths from zero on a number line diagram with equally spaced points corresponding to the numbers 0, 1, 2, etc. And represent whole number sums and differences within 100 on a number line diagram. Okay, so the changes that I made, if we want to take a look at the first box and compare it to this new box. So I changed the title. And um, because of originally the title was too vague. So what we're really doing here is we're adding and we're measuring distances by using a number line. In this lesson, you will learn how to add distances lengths by using a number line. So I completed the sentence because originally the, the sentence was left unfinished. So we have a much stronger objective here with stronger verbs. We always need strong verbs in our in our objective. Students will measure distances by using a number line to add lengths and solve addition problems, including word problems. Prior knowledge, there's this lesson is actually asking for a lot of prior knowledge. So we need to, we can't assume they already know these things. Students must be able to add two, two digit numbers horizontally, understand place value, tens and ones, uh, skip count by 10 and count by ones. Um, the outcome, this was not originally in the, the lesson. The outcome of this lesson is that the students will be able to add two digit numbers horizontally by using a number line, recognize distances, lengths on a number line, key terms, terms that come up a lot during this lesson, number line, add, addition, swings, jumps, and feet. And if you're wondering why I put swings and jumps in here is because we can't assume English is everybody's first language. So for the English language learners, they will be hearing the word swings and jumps. Uh, materials, we have printed worksheets, there's the practice quiz, and then there's the quiz. So, so this is the new box one compared to the, the original box one. So that's the difference there. So if we take a look at the next box in the original, it says introduction. How do we add on a number line? 
Mighty monkey swings from the vines in the jungle. How many feet has he traveled? And then we have the, the images here that we'd like to use. Question, how can we help mighty monkey keep track of the distance he has traveled? We can answer, we can use a number line to add. Let's learn how to add on a number line. All right, so the new box two. So I just move the word introduction over here under the number two because the students don't need to know that it's an introduction, that's just for us. So the title, a better title would be, How Far Can Mighty Monkey Swing Across the Vines? Uh, a better subtitle would be, Let's Use a Number Line to Help Us Add the Distance Traveled. Mighty Monkey Swings from the Vines in the Jungle. How many feet has he traveled? Uh, same image. The question this time is, Mighty Monkey needs to travel 100 feet. How can we help Mighty Monkey keep track of the distance he has traveled? We can use a number line to help us add lengths. Let's learn how to add on a number line. Now, the reason for these changes is because we need to be in alignment with these standards. So the standards are keeping us within 100. And so that was one of the reasons for the changes in the way box two is structured. Okay. So another thing I just want to quickly talk about before I go any further is let's just think about our average second grader. They are seven years old, most likely. Some are six, some are eight. We cannot assume that they already know how to read uh, or write or count <laughs> or add. So some of these um, second graders will be at grade level and have proficiency at grade level, but then some will, some won't, and then some will be above grade level, of course. But what we really need to understand about the average second grader is that they need consistency and they need predictability. So the original lesson, as we make our way through it, I'll show you that the original lesson didn't have a whole lot of consistency, did not have a whole lot of predictability. Uh, one thing I noticed with the original lesson is that it was not in alignment with standards or the objective, the original objective or the new objective. And then the visuals, uh, <laughs> the visuals needed a little bit of work, okay. There wasn't a whole lot of review of um, prior knowledge. Another thing I noticed about the original lesson was that there weren't enough examples in the guided practice. There was too big of a jump. We went from a few guided practice questions and then we took a pretty big leap into the independent practice. And the independent practice was pretty different from the guided practice. So we want for our independent practice to be almost similar, maybe even identical to the guided practice. Because remember, second graders need consistency and they need predictability. Your average second grader wants to be a part of this. They want to shout out the answers. They want to know that they you know, got the correct answer. Like we really want to build on their prior knowledge and just build their confidence throughout the guided practice. So they're feeling super confident as they make their way into the independent practice. We don't want to leave them confused and they get to the independent practice and they don't know what they're supposed to be doing because the guided practice was too hard to follow. Um, same with the applied practice. The applied practice should be pretty much similar to the independent practice and the and the guided practice. Assessment should be similar to all of the above practices. Before we give an assessment, we need to do a knowledge check like a practice quiz. And then the assessment, the actual quiz, should be in an alignment with everything that we've done. This is not the time to change things up or throw in a question that we never even covered or there's this is not the time for trick questions or you know anything like that. The assessment should be in alignment with the standards, with the objective, and it should follow the guided practice, the independent practice, and the applied practice. It should be basically the same thing, different questions. So um, 
keeping that in mind, and the number one things that we want to keep in mind is just consistency, predictability, alignment, alignment with standards, objectives, and the practices. So that being said, let's go back to the original. Okay, so we've got box three here, and it says, let's learn, use number line to help you add. Think about it. Can you add on a number line? Well, the, the first example is using the number 90 and the number 29. So already we're making our way above 100 and the standards are asking us to stay within 100. Um, so that's an issue. And then we've got the number line here. It starts at 90 and it makes its way over to 120. So we've already gone above 100. Um, so as we make our way through this example, it is building on prior knowledge here of the tens place and the ones place, but it's such a tiny visual that um, it's like this tiny little superscript. So your average second grader is not gonna see it. And if they do see it, it's not connected to any visual. So they're not gonna, most likely they won't make the connection. And then it takes us through counting, skip counting by 10 and then counting by ones. And um, down here at the bottom, all of a sudden the units of measurement change. We went from feet and now we're talking about inches. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna stay consistent. If we're talking about feet, let's continue to talk about feet. Let's not throw inches in right now. Um, in terms of consistency, <laughs> Let's just talk about feet for this lesson, and then we can do inches for a different lesson. Okay, same thing here with when we build on the prior knowledge. Um, it's talking about the tens place and the ones place, but there's no visual, and it's this tiny little superscript, so they might not even see it. So the way I change this for the new lesson, the new box three, so this is our guided practice. And the new title is Help Mighty Monkeys Swing 100 Feet Across the Vines. Because we want to reference length and we want to reference measurement and we want a visual of mighty monkeys swim, swinging 100 feet across the vines. So let's use a number line to help us add. Think about it. Can you add using a number line? And let's start with simple, small numbers like 10. Um, because we do need to think about the second graders that might still be struggling with adding and might still be struggling with counting. And we, we want it to be simple and easy where everybody in the class can understand the first example. So small numbers to begin with. He swings 10 feet. Next, he swings another 10 feet. We can find the sum by adding 10 feet plus 10 feet on a number line. So we've got an example of a number line here. The numbers get larger to the right. They get smaller to the left. This particular number line starts with zero. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and show the jumping. Uh, we're gonna start by circling the zero. The original lesson wanted us to make dots. But if you know a second grader, <laughs> if you've ever met a second grader and you ask a second grader to make a dot, they will make you a big circle and color it in. Uh, the text of an average second grader is rather large. Their print is rather large. So if you think about a regular sheet of paper, like a regular college rule sheet of paper, the text of a second grader will take up three of those lines. Like that's how large their print is. And if you ever ask them to make a dot, like if you say, you know, put a period at the end of the sentence, you know, make a dot, it's gonna be a big circle. That's just the way the second grade, grade mind and motor skills and everything they've got going on works. So, and, and the, in the original lesson, when it said make a dot, um, I was having a hard time finding the dot. It took me a while to figure out where's the dot. The dot was not obvious and I couldn't even really see it. But eventually when I found the dot, then it became more obvious to me. So, but a better idea, for your average second grader is just ask them to make a circle. 
And then let's go ahead and skip count by 10. So we're gonna jump 10, we circle the 10, that's where we landed. Skip count again to 10, circle the 20, that's where we landed. Um, 10 plus 10, 10 feet plus 10 feet is 20 feet. So Mighty Monkey traveled 20 feet. Let's review place value. So let's give them the visual that they're used to. They know about the tens blocks and they know about the ones blocks, tens and ones. That's the visual that we need, not that super tiny subscript that's kind of hard to see and it says, you know, tens and ones. Let's go back to what they're used to, the hands-on playing with the tens blocks and the ones blocks. Okay, so if we have two tens and three ones, we have 23. So let's go ahead and, you know, count our way to 23 on the number line. So we start at zero, circle the zero, jump to the 10, circle the 10, jump to the 20. And now we have three individual jumps. And then we circle the 23. Okay, so now <laughs> um, let's, let's keep going. Mighty Monkey takes another swing. He travels 15 feet. What is 20 feet plus 15 feet? So 15 is one ten and five ones. 20 feet plus 15 feet equals, well, we've got one ten and five ones. So we're gonna start with the 20, we circle the 20, we jump 10 spaces, we make it to the 30, we go ahead and circle the 30, and then now we're gonna jump five individual spaces. So 20 feet plus 15 feet, the answer is B, 35 feet where we landed. Okay, all right, so we made it to box four. I'm gonna show you the original box four. Okay, the original box four says sums using a number line. Let's watch a video about adding on a number line. Learn, practice adding on a number line. Martina can travel quickly through time. Click the video below to help Martina keep track of how far she has traveled. What is 27 minutes plus 82 minutes? Okay, couple of different things going wrong here. We were talking about Mighty Monkey and now all of a sudden there's Martina. And we were talking about feet and now all of a sudden we're talking about minutes. Okay. That will confuse your average second grader. And then we've already started talking about a certain character, which is Mighty Monkey. We need to keep talking about him. And if you're thinking, oh, attention span, you know, let's introduce a new character. Now is not the time to introduce a new character because we do in fact have their attention with Mighty Monkey. And if, we switch up the characters all of a sudden, and then we switch up the units of measurement from feet to minutes, you will lose a certain segment of your class. They will get confused and wonder what happened to Mighty Monkey. Did he make it to you know, where he was going? We have no idea. Martina comes along and she's talking about minutes. So and another thing that's wrong here is that um, we're gonna go above 100, so we end up with 109 and we wanna stay within 100 if we reference the standards and we wanna stay within the standards. So let me show you the new box four. Okay, so we're still in the guided practice and we're still adding measuring distances by using a number line. Mighty Monkey is gonna take another swing here. That will keep the children engaged and uh, interested if we're worried about attention span by the time we get to box four. Okay, so let's help Mighty Monkey travel 100 feet. That's our goal. Okay, Mighty Monkey swings 27 feet. 27 is two tens and seven ones. So 35 feet plus 27 feet. Let's give them a visual for um, the two tens places and the seven ones places. And then we're gonna circle where we start. And then we're gonna jump 10 spaces, circle that, jump again, 10 more spaces, circle that, and then seven individual spaces. So 35 feet plus 27 feet is 62 feet. Okay. And all right, so that's the new box four. So let's take a look at the, the original box five. 
Okay, so the original box five says hands on, use number lines to find the sum of two links. Practice, add links on a number line. Okay, can you add using a number line? Let's try adding 74 plus 22. You will need this number line and counter. Okay. All right, so we've got um, a bunch of different examples here with the, the number line and then the equations and the counter. And what's happening again here is that when we reference the prior knowledge, the tens place and the ones place that it's this little tiny subscript again. And then it the, the numbers are getting too large. We're getting, um, you know, we're getting up to 96 and we're trying to stay within 100 again. Um, so it's a bit of a confusing example. And then we don't know who this is. Is this Martina or is this Mighty Monkey? All of a sudden our character is gone. So let's um, let's take a look at the new box five. Okay. So remember consistency, predictability, that's what second graders like. So the new, the new title is adding measuring distances by using a number line. Mighty Monkey takes another swing. Practice, help Mighty Monkey travel 100 feet. Mighty Monkey takes another swing. He swings 38 feet. How far has he traveled? He has already traveled 62 feet. So we circle the 62, great job. Now let's take a look at 38. 38 is three tens and eight ones. And we've got the visual for that. Now we're going to jump three tens and eight ones. And then we circle every time we land. And then we count individually to eight and we circle where we land. And we made it, we made it to 100. Okay. All right. So we helped Mighty Monkey travel 100 feet. We made it to our goal. We were consistent this whole time. Same character. Each practice question is predictable and consistent. We pick up where we left off. We're measuring our distances in lengths and feet. And um, everything we've done here is in alignment with the objective and it's in alignment with the standards. Okay, so now we made it to box six. I'm gonna take you to the original box six. Okay, so box six says, um, it's your turn, find the sum, practice. Use number lines to find the missing sums. What are the missing sums? Use the number line to help you add. And then it takes us to this link and then the link takes us to a practice question. And the practice question shows us a car and a ruler. So all of a sudden we're me measuring in inches. And there's also the inconsistency because we went from Mighty Monkey to Martina to a car. So uh, you're gonna lose some of your second graders. And then we also went from feet to minutes to inches. So we're gonna lose some of our students because our unit of measurement keeps changing. Um, then all of these practice questions um, are not in alignment with the guided practice they're slightly different. So we're gonna lose a lot of our second graders because they're needing that predictability and they're needing that consistency. And then the way these questions are formatted and structured, they're not, they're, you're gonna lose some of your students. Um, the very first example takes us above 100 and we're trying to stay within 100. Um, so all of these practice questions we're gonna lose our students. And then some of these numbers are too big. Okay, so the new box six. So this is our independent practice. Title, it's your turn. Travel 100 feet using a number line. The banner will say time for you to travel 100 feet. Our goal is to measure lengths using a number line. So our goal, is in alignment with our standards and our objective. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna catch up to Mighty Monkey. So it's time for the user to swing across the vines and travel 100 feet. 
and the user will use the number lines to help them add. So we can add in a little illustration of children swinging from vines. Okay, time to join Mighty Monkey. First you swing 10 feet, next you swing 12 feet. 12 is one 10 and two ones. Circle the zero as your starting point, then jump 10 feet. Next jump another 10 feet, then jump two feet. Where did you land? Circle your answer. So. Here we go, 10 feet plus 12 feet. We start at the zero, we go ahead and circle that. Jump, circle the 10, jump again, circle the 20, and then two individual jumps, we circle the 22. Correct answer is C, 22. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Take another swing. This time you swing 25 feet, circle the 22 as your starting point. Next, think about the number 25. How many tens and how many ones do you have? How many jumps do you need to take? Okay, so here we've got our starting point. We'll go ahead and circle that 22, jump to the 33, jump again to the 42, <laughs> sorry, the 32 to the 42. And then we take these individual jumps and then we land on the 47. Okay, so yeah, correct answer is C, 47 feet. Okay. You have traveled 47 feet, you take another swing, you swing 32 feet, circle the 47 as your starting point. How many tens and how many ones does 32 have? Circle where you land. Okay, so same idea here, circling where we start, uh, taking our leap, circling every time we land, and then we get to 79. Okay, all right. So now we're going to start again at 79. We take another swing. This time we swing and we, um, we travel 21 feet. That's two tens and one one. And then again, circling where we start, taking our jumps, circling every time we land and then circling our final destination and we made it to 100. So we did it. We traveled 100 feet, we made it to Mighty Monkey. Okay, so that, and then we end with this image of the children meeting up with Mighty Monkey. Okay, so now we make it to box seven. I'll show you the original box seven. Okay. Okay, so now all of a sudden there's an assessment, but there should really be a knowledge check here. There should be a checking for understanding. Um, and now all of a sudden we're talking about centimeters. So that's an issue because we want to stay consistent with our unit of measurements. Um, same thing again with the subscript, the little tiny subscript for our tens place and our ones place. Okay, now all of a sudden it's talking about hours. So then again, um, we need to stay consistent with our units of measurement. And same, same problem with the subscript. Now the question three, none of these types of questions were in the guided practice or in the independent practice. So this type of question is just kind of coming out of nowhere. We haven't seen it before. We're going to lose a lot of our students because we're showing them a question that we didn't practice with them. And same with this um, question number four. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the new box seven. Remember consistency, predictability. Okay, so this time, we're gonna do an applied practice. It's not time for the knowledge check yet because we need a guided practice, an independent practice, and then an applied practice. We need to practice at least three times before we decide to check for understanding. Okay, so same title, adding measuring distances by using a number line. So this time the subtitle says, together let's travel 100 feet with Mighty Monkey. So we've got the picture of Mighty Monkey and the children together. Can you add to 100 using a number line? That's our goal. Okay, so keeping with the consistency of the way we asked the questions the first time, the first a few times in the guided practice and the independent practice, we're going to ask those questions again here in the applied practice. And we're gonna reference the visuals of the tens place and the ones place. 
keeping the consistency of circling where we start, jumping, circling where we land, and then where we, the final destination, the final jump is our answer. Okay, so we went from, we swung to 10 feet and then we swung 17 feet. So now we are at 27 feet. Then we swing another 25 feet. Okay, and so then we've got the same thing, the visuals, the jumps, the circles. Okay, now we've made it to 52 feet. Okay, so now we've, now we're on question three. We're starting at 52 feet. We're gonna jump, we swing 33 feet. And so how far have we traveled? Okay, so we circle the 52, that's where we start. We jump to the 62, circle that, jump again. We're now at the 72, we circle that. Jump again, we're at the 82, we circle that. And then three individual jumps, we're now at the 85. Okay, so one last question. We're gonna swing one more time. We swing 15 feet, how far have we traveled? So we've got 110 and five ones. Circle the 85 is our starting point. Take our jump to the 95, circle that, and then our five individual jumps and we made it to 100. Okay, so we did it. We traveled 100 feet together with Mighty Monkey. Okay, so that, okay, now we're gonna take a look at the original again. Okay, so now we're, Back to the original and the original, uh, we're in a box eight and it's asking us to assess ourselves. It's gonna give us a quiz right now. Uh, a little bit too early to, to give us a quiz. And then the quiz questions are not in alignment with the guided practice. So that's gonna be an issue here. So we've got, um, and then this assessment is overly emphasizing starting so each of the numbers are written with the smaller number first each of the questions sorry well not all of them but some of them some of these questions are written with the smaller number first and the larger number second and they the the feedback keeps telling us that we need to start with the larger number and then count to the smaller number and that's not really in the standards and that's not even um, a part of the objective so this this quiz is a bit confusing um, so once again, we're gonna lose a lot of the students here. And then we are going above 100 with some of these questions. Okay, so, and it's a rather long quiz. And it's emphasizing things that is not in the objective. So let's take a look at the new box eight. Okay, so the new box eight is going to be a check for understanding because now that we've gone over what we, what we are trying to learn three times, we've given the guided practice, the independent practice and the applied practice. Now let's take a look and see if they understand what's going on. Okay, so the title is review practice quiz. Subtitle, measure lengths using a number line that's consistent with our objective and our standards. Banner, show what you know. So it's time to take a quiz and the quiz is gonna take them to a worksheet. And now all of the questions here are on the worksheet, but the worksheet gives them a chance. Go ahead and open it up. The worksheet gives the students a chance. They're gonna go ahead and print this out, a chance to, um, physically circle on paper and then physically jump on paper. So what they can do here is um, print it out. And then when they see the number line, they can make the circles and the jumps, make the circles and the jumps. And here are the four questions that take the students all the way up to 100. Staying in consistency and in alignment with um, everything that we've done prior to this. Okay, so that's the practice quiz. And the practice quiz is also designed to help them with their confidence. They should be feeling really good about themselves. They should have scored 100%. So now when they make their way into 
box nine, which is the actual assessment, the quiz, which takes them to the, the quiz worksheet, which is, which looks like this. Same idea, they print this out and they can physically circle where they're starting and where they're landing. Okay. And it looks like this. By the time that they're done with the quiz, they will have made it to 100. Okay. All right, so that's what the new document looks like. Going back to the original. All right, so the original box nine was also a quiz, but it was it's inconsistent and the numbers are too large taking us above 100 well not all of them some of the questions are below 100 but um some of them are taking us above 100 and then this quiz is also overemphasizing something that was just never in the standards or just never in the objective to begin with it's overemphasizing this idea that they need to recognize the larger number and start with the larger number. Um, and that's not really necessary for what the whole point of this lesson is, which is to measure lengths using a number line. So um, some inconsistency here with the quiz. Okay, so that takes us to the end of this, <laughs> this lesson. Okay. So, and that also takes us to the end of this video. So um, thank you again, just to recap who I am and what this was. My name is Cynthia Grace. I'm a candidate for the K-8 instructional design position. And this was a sample lesson. Thank you for watching. Um, with this video, you also have two additional attachments, which is the original and the new lesson. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now.